Brothers and sisters, it is time. Our time has come. The hour has come for us to sorrow. The world's going to rejoice, but you and I will sorrow because we see those that are being deceived. We will sorrow. If we have Jesus' heart, we will sorrow. We will weep. Because the Lord is weeping. Because Jesus is sorrowing. I want to read a verse of scripture to you. Romans chapter 9, verse 2. Let's begin with verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Now I thank God that I don't have continual sorrow. And I thank God that it's not a great heaviness. That's coming. But we certainly are moving in that direction. Paul says, For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, It is uh, with a heavy heart when I see all these people being deceived by this charismatic movement that's connected to the Catholic Church. When I see this economical movement and those that think that what they're joining is the Holy Spirit. And I know it's not. I know it's not the Holy Spirit. So while they rejoice thinking that they're in the Holy Spirit, thinking it is the Holy Spirit, we that have the truth, we must we must sorrow for them. We must. If we have a heart, if we really have a heart, if we really truly care about people, we are going to sorrow. And eventually weep. Now Paul said. He did not cease. For the space of three years. Night and day. Warning them. That wolves. Were coming in. And they would not spare the flock. When you have the truth in your heart. You can't just ignore what's going on. You can't just dismiss it. When you care about people, when you really care about people. Now, there's a lot of charlatans today. There's a lot of
play acting going on. A lot of hirelings, not real shepherds. And all that's going on today, all the deception, let's not take the stand where we say, oh, well, Jesus said these things were going to happen and just harden our hearts. No. Let's let the truth soften our hearts. Let's accept the truth. Now, I told you that Jesus told me that now I was going to see prophecy fulfilled so fast that his own people wouldn't believe it though they saw it before their eyes. And I said, Lord, certainly they're going to believe it and they see it before their eyes. He says, if they don't believe my word, they're not going to believe it when they see it before their eyes. What is he saying? Most are going to live in denial. Did you know that Peter, when he denied Jesus, that he went into denial? That he denied Jesus? When he said, I'm going fishing. We don't know what's become of, of, of Jesus. We don't know if... Beca- they literally treated that last three years where they walked with Jesus like it never happened. And Peter just went into denial. The whole thing, they just tried to forget it because it brought sorrow to their heart. Their hearts were filled with sorrow when Jesus, in his resurrected, glorified body, came into the room, stood in their midst. They were sorrowful. What's being called the Holy Ghost today, people, is not the Holy Ghost. The presence of I am is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not female or male. The Holy Spirit is not male or female. The Holy Spirit is spirit. The real Holy Spirit, the real Holy Ghost, doesn't speak his own words. He only brings to our remembrance what Jesus has already said. While many today, the multitudes today, are going down that broad road that leads to destruction, there are a few that have found the narrow gate that leads to life. And passing through that narrow gate is mental anguish. It's sorrow. It's crowding. What does that mean? That means there's not very many going that way. But the ones that are going that way, it's a very narrow way. You can't take anything with you. Naked you came into this world, naked you shall leave. Being born again, that narrow gate that leads to life is the birth canal. This is the beginning of sorrows, birth pains. How many of you out there listening are in the birth canal? How many of you are in the narrow gate? How many know that the man-child is about to drop and be birthed? How many know that? And how many know that the Antichrist has a matrix? Matrix means the womb. There's a birthing of a new age coming. But there's also the birthing 
of the man-child. And if you're passing through that narrow gate that leads to life, through that birth canal, being birthed out of the church, out of the body of Christ, you have tremendous pressure on your mind, on your heart. When a, when a baby is being born and it's going through the birth canal, they say that they don't, that in the baby's uh, head is not this hard skull, but it's, it's uh, soft. Why? Because as it crowns, as it comes through the birth canal, as it's being born, it crowns, that head crowns. Why? It wouldn't be able to come through the birth canal if it wouldn't crown. How are you and I going to receive our crown, brothers and sisters? How are we going to be crowned? There's a crown laid up for us. You don't receive that crown if you don't overcome the world. If you're going to receive a crown, if you're going to be crowned like a baby is crowned as it's leaving the mother's womb, you're going to have to finish your course. Stay in the birth canal. Many today are falling by the wayside. Stay in the birth canal. Stay in the narrow gate that leads to life. Paul, or Jesus said, be, we must be born again. But Peter said, being born again. Jesus said, these are they that followed me in the regeneration. It's not a one-time thing. We're being born again. We're being born again, folks. Born again. But this time, of the Holy Ghost. Are you listening? Born of God. A new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. This is an operation of the Spirit. This is not something you and I can perform. Are you in the narrow gate? Are you in the birth canal, friend? If you are, you and I don't sorrow like the church is going to sorrow. Because the sorrowing we're experiencing, we experience the other end of that. How many know that the baby, when it's going through the birth canal, it feels the pain, it feels the pressure but it doesn't understand it. Did you know the knowledge of of good and evil is what really causes us the, the real trouble in our life? When we know what's causing the pain? You know, when you when a baby is going through that womb, there's tremendous pain. But it doesn't remember that pain. Why? Think about it with me for a moment. This is a great truth. This is a great secret. A great mystery. Why doesn't an infant baby feel the pain like we do? What's the difference? The difference is is that you and I complain about it. The way the baby complains about it is cries. You and I complain with our words, with our actions. David said, I cried unto the Lord and he heard my cry. How do you know you're being birthed out of the birth canal? All you got left is a cry. You don't have anything left. 
That's all you got left. You understand that your own words can't vindicate you. You understand you can't clear yourself, you can't justify yourself. And you understand that all you've got left is a cry. Shall he not avenge his elect that cry in him day and night, though he bear long with him? That's all I've got left, brothers and sisters. That's all I got left. I don't have anything left. That's all I got left is tears. And we knew that this day was coming. We knew that this hour was coming. The hour, the power of darkness. Even as when Jesus was in that garden. We're here, people. This is the hour. This is not the hour to be complaining, to be murmuring to be fighting, arguing with one another, play acting. The Lord's listening from heaven for the cry of the man-child. And then God is going to take that child up in his arms. And he's going to deliver. That child out of this world. Born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed, the Word of God. You know why I don't murmur and complain to the Lord, and I haven't for years? Because of the truth has purged me. I can't tell you that I don't feel pressure. But at least it's not acute. At least it's not piercing. But I continually feel the pressure of going through the narrow gate. In the process of this mental anguish, we're losing our minds for the mind of Christ. All that we received in the fall is being reversed. having the mind of Christ. Amen? Having His heart. Having His desires. Having His will. Doing His will. But there are multitudes that are going the broad way. That leads to destruction. I 
I know in my spirit and in my heart I'm going to be with Jesus very soon. I know that. Sooner actually probably than I think. I know that. I know that in my spirit. I know that in my heart. In fact, I may not even make it to the end of 2016. I may be gone before 2016. And I'm not talking about going to the grave. Enoch was not, for God took him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. He was translated that he should not see death. Jesus asked Martha, did she believe that you could live and not ever die? And she said, I believe you're the Christ. But she didn't answer his question. Never die. Live and never die. Never die. Consider that. Never die. Never see death. How many have been in that birth canal It became a stillborn? They never made it to the birth. They were aborted. They died in the process. And they ended up in hell. Because they got off course. We've got to Go all the way to the birth. He's able. He's able to deliver us from evil. Do you believe that? Do you believe the Lord is able to deliver us from evil? Deliver us from self, deliver us from this world, deliver us from sin, deliver us from Satan, and present us before his throne without fault. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb, the man child. The Lord's crowning jewel. The crowning jewel of the Lord's crown. The man child. His elite. See, we always hear about the elite here on this earth. God's got his elite. The crowning jewels. Oh, praise his name. Soon and very soon We're gonna see the King Soon and very soon We are gonna see the King Soon and very soon We are gonna see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. There'll be no night there, we are going to see the King. There'll be no night there, 
We are going to see the king. There'll be no night there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Very soon, oh, we're going to see, we're going to see the king. Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Sing with me. There'll be no night there. We are going to see the King. There'll be no night there. We are going to see the King. There'll be no night there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. In that city bright, where Jesus is the light. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice. Pray, God, that you'll draw them to yourself. Bring them in, Lord, into your great salvation, Lord. Draw them by your Spirit as they hear the gospel, some of them for the first time. But as they're hearing, Lord, the truth of your word, draw them by your Spirit. Lord, I pray that those under the sound of my voice, if they are sick in body, that you'd heal them right now, Lord. Deliver them of any ailment, of any sickness. No matter what it is, Lord, even if they are uh, got cancer, heal them, deliver them. If they're paralyzed, I pray, Lord, they walk. If they are an amputee, Lord, and they've lost a leg or an arm or some limb, I pray, God, it grow back right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that miracles begin breaking out all over this earth right now in the name of Jesus. Miracles, God, like in the days of old when you was here, Jesus. Open blind eyes right now, Lord, under the sound of my voice. I pray. I'm asking you to do this, Jesus. I'm asking you. Asking you, Lord, to open up deaf ears. In Jesus' name, Lord, those under the sound of my voice, Lord, that are not filled with the Holy Ghost, right now, Lord, that they be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that they be speaking with other tongues as the Spirit give them utterance. Lord, in Jesus' name, the Holy Ghost, right now as I'm preaching, as I'm praying, as I'm speaking, Lord, in Jesus' name, those that hear, under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would pour out your Spirit right now upon them. Pour out your Spirit and fill them. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, let revival break out, God, in Jesus' name. Right now, Lord, from this broadcast, right now, God, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh. Pour out your Spirit. Pour out your Spirit, Lord, even as you promised in your Word. You promised in your Word, Lord. Pour out your Spirit, Lord. Pour out your Spirit. Pour out your spirit, Jesus. Oh, God, you told me, Jesus, that where the hunger and the thirst is the greatest, Lord, you said you were going to pour out your spirit there first. Lord, I know that the hunger and the thirst for righteousness is so great in Africa right now. 
I pray, Lord, let it rain, Lord God, those that are faithfully listening to this broadcast. I pray you let it rain right now, Lord. Let it rain, the Holy Ghost to rain right now, Lord, in Africa, in Jesus' name. Lord, let there be a moving of the Holy Ghost that goes across this world right now, in Jesus' name, Lord. The Holy Ghost be poured out. I'm asking. I'm asking you, Lord, for revival. I'm asking you for the genuine Holy Ghost. Lord, even as the devil is filling people in this hour, I pray, God, that you fill them with the precious Holy Ghost, Jesus. Real, true, genuine deliverance, true, genuine revival. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is moving by His Spirit, moving throughout all the earth. Signs and wonders when God moveth, move, O oh God, in me. God is moving by His Spirit, moving throughout all the earth. Signs and wonders when God moveth, move, O oh God, in me. How many know Jesus? is still, is still the great physician. He's still the great physician. He still heals the sin-sick soul. He still opens the blinded eyes and opens the deaf ears. He still raises the dead. So please let me walk with you, Jesus. Don't ever leave me alone. For without you, Lord, I could never no, never make heaven my home. The Lord was just reminding me as this great pain just came upon my head. The devil trying to attack me. The other day, Sonia and I were at the store and I started to have a heart attack. And it was pretty scary. But the devil can't take you out, brothers and sisters, if God won't let him. Though he tries, though he would like to, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Oh, the devil would like to take Brother Joseph out. He'd like me to miss the mark and fall short of the glory of God and not enter into the overcomer company of those that overcome death. But God's greater. Brothers and sisters, if a pain comes upon you, if a symptom comes upon you, don't listen to it. Don't give in to it. Because that symptom can become a lying, I mean, can become, become an actual bona fide reality in your life. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Don't listen to the symptoms. Look to Jesus. He's our great physician. Amen? He even raises the dead. Praise your name, Jesus. Lord, I don't even know how to end this 
this broadcast. I don't want to end it. I don't want to end it. Lord, I just want to keep on moving and going in your spirit and just just keep walking and just keep going until I'm home. Till I get home, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. How many know that it's when you're under the anointing? Amen. That's when you're the closest to Jesus, under the anointing, under the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh yeah, in this world, that's the closest you're going to get. And you don't want the anointing to stop, right? Hallelujah. But in this world, our energy, our physical energy runs out. The batteries run out on our phones or the power goes out. In this world, the energy comes to an end. But eternal life is ahead of us. There shall be no end. Amen? No end to that power. No end to that energy. Unlimited. Unlimited power. Man has developed hot fusion. Nuclear power. But they can't come up with cold fusion because that's eternal life. They'll never come up with cold fusion. They'll always have the, that which is volatile, unstable, that has to constantly be cooled. The core has to constantly be cooled from the reaction of those atoms. But how many know the last Adam, Jesus Christ, not only is stable, but he's solid. Amen? Eternal life. Cold fusion. Eternal life. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but this world is not my home. This world is not my home. Hallelujah. Jesus gives to us eternal life. We have that life in us. Going to live forever. Amen? There'll be no watches. There'll be no clocks. There'll be no sundials. There'll be no time. The angel comes down, sets one foot on the land and one on the sea, and said, Time will be no more. Amen? Eternity. No more sickness. No more sadness. No more tears. No more death. No more fear. No more sorrow. No more devil. Hallelujah. Hollywood, Hollywood tries to paint a picture with esoteric understanding of what they think heaven's going to be like. The New Ages think they're going to bring heaven on earth through their I am presence. No. No. Jesus Christ is setting up his kingdom in the hearts of people. And then he will come down. His city will come down on this earth and the tabernacle of God will be with men. And God will dwell in the midst of his people. And his bride is going to sit with him in his throne. And she's going to rule with him forever and ever. See, the church isn't going to rule with Jesus forever and ever. They're only going to rule with Jesus for a thousand years. But the bride is going to rule with him forever and ever and ever. Time without end. No more time. If you only want to settle for ruling with Jesus for a thousand years, that's up to you. 
the greater reward is to rule with Jesus forever, to sit with him in his throne forever. Hey, sitting in the throne with Jesus uh, or in that position of an overcomer for a thousand years is pretty good. But remember, in eternity, a thousand years is as a day. A thousand years goes by just like a day in eternity. That's going to be a real quick thousand years. You sure you want to pass that up? When you could spend forever in the throne, become one with him? Not just enjoy sitting with him for only a thousand years? There are so many people that take Brother Joseph for granted. You take this broadcast for granted. But there are those out there you don't take this for granted. And I thank God for you. I thank God for your hearts. And I would encourage you to go back and listen to this more than once. For the truth. The time will come when the voice of the bride will leave the land. You won't hear her voice in the land anymore. You can go back and listen to audios. But as far as the fresh word, the Spirit and the bride are now speaking. The Spirit and the bride say, come. Right now. But soon the bride will leave this world. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Mortality is being swelled up in life. I don't know how much longer, people, you're going to hear my voice on this broadcast. I'm nothing in myself but a voice. Just a voice. God bless you.